Okay, guys. Uh, a flash drive is basically, you know, a an empty cartridge for a video game system that can uh, take ROMs and flash them to the EEPROM on on that drive or on that cartridge so that the game thinks that it's playing the original game or um, you know whatever. Uh, you know, a lot of people reference these as EverDrive. EverDrive is actually, a, uh, I believe, a name brand, and um, flash drive is actually the uh, the correct term for the generic um, type of item that it is. Um, so, you know, uh, with that, uh, I'm just going to go over a couple of the ones that I actually own. Um, you know, I'm not going to tell you guys where to pick up ROMs. I'm not going to tell you guys where to get games or anything like that. Um, I, I mainly use my EverDrive to basically uh, test things and or my my uh, flash cards. Sorry, I see even I do it as well. Um, but uh, I mainly use my flash cards to uh, test systems, test games, uh, you know, do demos, uh, play, uh, you know imports of games that are translated. Um, you know, I don't think that it's fair that, uh, you know, that not every game is available to every country. So uh, when a fan translated patch RPG comes out, I try to play it. Um, so with that, I'm just going to go over uh, some of the ones that I have. Um, I've got this uh, Genesis one. Uh, it's Basically, uh, it's not very expensive. Um, I think it's like a version two or something like that. That's based off of the EverDrive. It even has an EverDrive sticker on it, but it is not. I don't believe that it's built by the same people who build EverDrives. I think this is a Chinese knockoff that I got from uh, Wish.com. Um, you know, it's, Wish is actually a pretty good site. Um, although it is a little bit buyer beware, um, you know, sizes of things, you know, tend to be wrong, um, and most products are genuinely or are generally like a, a Chinese knockoff. But I knew that going into it, so you know, it's just one of those things where a site you have to be educated to go shop at. Um, now with my Genesis EverDrive, it does uh, uh, 32x uh, games as well. But if you're going to do emulate a 32x game, um, one, it has to be for your region, uh, and then two, uh, you actually have to have the the 32x hardware plugged into your Genesis so that it actually works. Um, other than that, it's you know it's really good. On, it's a little bit slow on loading, but um, I'm I'm fairly happy with you know the quality of it and stuff like that. Um, let's see. Next is the R4 Gold, uh, and it is, uh, this one has a little bit of controversy around it. Um, it says that it's for the 3DS and all this other stuff. Was, guys, it does not play 3DS games. It plays DS games, and you can plug, you know, your, your R4 Gold into a 3DS, and the 3DS will not reject it and it will still let you play DS games. It does not let you play 3DS games. Um, other than that little bit of confusion, again, it's, you know, uh, a good uh, a good product, um, you know, as long as you know what you're purchasing. Uh, you know, there's all, the whole 3DS and stuff like that. It's, it's a marketing ploy to try to get you to, you know, pay a higher price for these things, thinking that you're going to be emulating or you have a flash card for uh, 3DS games, you know, but it's not. Uh, other than that, you know, it, it loads, again, it loads a little bit slow, but um, my 3DS does not detect it, even even with like some of the latest updates that Nintendo's been pushing. Um, I, think, I think Nintendo's kind of given up on trying to uh, prevent any kind of flash cards for DS titles since they don't really care about it anymore. They're not making any money on those titles, so why should they care? Um, the next one that I have is a uh, SNES quote EverDrive that is the Chinese version. Again, this is a Chinese knockoff. Um, it's just a basic flash card. 
Uh, it does not work with any of the special chip games, um, so like Pilot Wings and uh, any of the FX games or any of the uh, like, just basically anything with with a special chip does not work. Um, again, I just mainly use this for like playing import uh, translations and stuff like that. Um, you know, and it's it's work. It works. You know, uh, I think I picked mine up for like forty bucks. It's very cheap. Um, you know, there are better versions out there, like uh, the SD2 SNES. But that thing is outside of my price range. Um, last time I checked, it was over a hundred dollars, and you know I'm I'm not going to pay that much money for uh, you know for that device. Um, even even now, like as I'm making this video, uh, even though all of the special chips are actually on that board, not all of them are turned on. So even though like it has the capability of doing it, they just haven't created the software and the firmware inside of the device, which they, they promise that they're going to get to doing it. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing whether or not they can actually fulfill that promise. Uh, but it's, you know, one of those things where it's like, okay, they've, they've put everything on there, they've promised this, but are you willing to risk that much money on a promise? Not that I'm calling them liars, I'm just you know, sometimes things get in the way and priorities change. Uh, the next one that I have is the uh, is one for the Game Boy Advanced. Um, it's the Flash Cart 4. Uh, I picked this one up on Amazon, um, and it's really good. It does a wonderful job of emulating. Um, it works on all of my Game Boy Advance capable uh, systems. You know, it works in the Game Boy Player, which was really nice to have. Um, and again, it's you know a great way to play any of the fan translated games. Um, also, like all of these devices are great for being able to play homebrews or even develop games. Um, so you know, it's not just for piracy. There are legitimate reasons for actually using these devices. Um, you know. And they're they're useful, um, you know. I, I know that there's there was like a, a little bit of a tizzy about, you know, people saying that the car tr the uh, flash carts were using five volts instead of three volts, and the systems were expecting three volts, and there's you know buildup of heat and stuff like that. Uh, the only system I've ever used one of these things on where I noticed uh, heat buildup and it was actually fairly fast was when I plugged my uh, Super Nintendo Chinese version EverDrive into uh, my SNES Mini, um, the actual cartridge slot, uh, the metal housing around the cartridge slot, uh, was warm to the touch um, and only played for about 30 minutes or so. Uh, you know, I'm, and I'm not doing marathon runs of like 20 hours or something like that with these things on, on my older systems. Um, I do prefer physical media. I do prefer to actually own the game itself and stuff like that. But sometimes it's just not possible. Um, you know, there there is no legitimate way to get some of these fan translations. So, you know, and that's that's mainly what I use them for. Well, that's it for this episode of Monday Designs. I'm your host Monday, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like what you see, you can support me and my channel on Patreon by clicking one of the links below. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.